Hey, what's up everyone and welcome to another very exciting video. I'm Gaming Mars and today we're talking about the GameCube collection. So I wrote a script for this video and I stupidly did this alphabetically. Unfortunately, this collection is not in alphabetical order. So I guess I'm just gonna have to alphabetize it as we go on. Now, the first game we got here is 1080 Avalanche. I'm not sure if you guys remember, but once upon a time, the snowboarding genre was very popular amongst gamers and it hasn't been for a long time. 1080 Avalanche is a sequel to the 1080 snowboarding on the N64. This improves on the old one in every way. The graphics are actually quite amazing. If you have a GameCube lying around, check it out. And would you look at that, on the back of the box right here says, it's got broadband connectivity. That's crazy because the GameCube wasn't known for such things. Incidentally, I got this game for $14 on eBay. I checked out its current worth and my goodness gracious me, it is worth $114 on eBay right now. Burn out. I'm gonna level you. I don't really like this game. My friend Caroline likes it, so I got it so that we can play a racing game whenever she hangs out. Um, yeah, I've always been Need for Speed type of guy. Never got into the whole burnout thing. I just checked out the value for burnout and it's not worth mentioning, so we're only gonna be talking about the value of the expensive games. Me, I love me a good fighter, and that's why this is here. I like to play fighting games without Super Smash Brothers. Crazy Taxi. Now, I like this game on the arcade, but as a console game, it's not as good. You're robbed of the experience of the actual machine that was Crazy Taxi, and you played Crazy Taxi at the arcade for short periods of time. I don't recommend getting this on console unless you can't live without this game. I do chuck it on every now and then, but like I said, it's for 10 to 20 minutes. It's not a fully fleshed out game. On console, that is. Def Jam Vendetta. Now this is a video game. This is like a wrestling game with rappers. The soundtrack for this game is awesome. There's a sequel that I don't have, but I do intend on checking it out one day. But this game is awesome. F-Zero GX. This is my favorite Nintendo racer. Every Nintendo fanboy loves Mario Kart. I had to be different and I'd pick F-Zero GX. This was actually the last game this franchise actually put out. So um, check this one out on the GameCube. I 100% recommend it. It looks amazing. The graphics totally hold up. Oh, and incidentally, I just checked out its price. I got it for $36 and it is going for a whopping $130 on eBay. Next game on this list is FIFA Street. Now, I liked this game when I bought it when I was a teenager, but I do not like it anymore. It has not held up so well. And I'm not entirely digging this Photoshop job they've done on Ronaldinho. Now, I've got a few EA big games in this collection, and that is because they made amazing video games. FIFA Street 2 is 100% better than FIFA Street 1. I'm completely addicted to this game. I'm actually playing it right now. It's a lot of fun. Check this one out. It's crazy how good this game is. You see, it was in this generation of gaming where they nailed the formula for arcade sports games. They don't really do that anymore. And that's a shame because games like these are f***ing amazing. The Game Boy Player Disc. This is only useful with a Game Boy Player, which is currently connected to my Nintendo GameCube. The Game Boy Player is the most useful accessory ever made for any console ever. I strongly recommend it if you're looking to add to your GameCube collection, because this means you can now play Game Boy Advance games and you advance your library by a few hundred games. The Hulk Ultimate Destruction. Now this game is a lot of fun. You just go around as the Hulk smashing things. It's very therapeutic. Now, coming up, we have one of my favorite franchises, the Bond franchise games. Everything or Nothing, Nightfire, and From Russia With Love. This game actually uses the voice acting from Pierce Brosnan. This one is my favorite game out of the lot. It's the only first person shooter out of these games. These two are third person shooters, and this is the one where Sean Connery does the voice acting. This was actually the last time he reprised his role as 007. This game is a lot of fun, check it out. I absolutely love the concept of them making a video game out of one of the older movies, and um, they aced it with this game. The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time, the collector's edition. It's got the master quest. I gotta tell you, I never played this on the GameCube. I just beat it on the N64 and I felt like that was good enough for me. I'll definitely beat it when it comes out on Switch, but I just can't be stuffed with the GameCube. You'll have to forgive me for that one. Would you look at that? It says Game of the Year 1998. I feel like these ones are worth something. Let's check it out. I got it for $40 and it is worth $120. If I look disappointed, in it, it's because I don't like that these things are worth so much because I ain't ever selling my GameCube collection. I don't care how much it's worth, I ain't selling. The Legend of Zelda, The Wind Waker. So I bought this at a retro video game convention and I didn't notice when I bought it, but 
I actually bought the German version of the game. It's not an issue because I can select English as the playthrough language, but the cover art and everything, it's German. It's got two, hey, it's got the Master Quest version of Ocarina of Time. Wow, that just tells you how many times I've opened this box. Wind Waker is one of my bucket list games, but I've just not found time to get around to it just yet. When it came out, it was following up Majora's Mask. Nintendo and all their wisdom chose to go with some childish graphics. The whole cell shade look. It did not look that impressive at the time. If anything, it made Link look like a cartoon. And after the dark games we just got, I was expecting something a little darker. Not something not so childish. I was also a teenager at this stage and I was thinking, why isn't Nintendo growing up with me? But amazingly, this is one of the games that has stood the test of time. You hook it up right now and it looks cool. It 100% holds up graphically which is more than it can be said about any other game from each generation. Oh, and apparently it's worth $140 on eBay. Mario Golf, I'm in love with you. When Mario Golf was announced earlier this year, everyone went nuts. I had no idea why, I'm a Nintendo fanboy. I'm not into Mario Golf. Why on earth is everyone into Mario Golf all of a sudden? So I checked it out, it's no good. And I still bought it for the Nintendo Switch. And it was also no good. Is golf like really big and popular in the rest of the world? that everyone loves it so much that they need to see Mario playing golf? I gotta tell you, in Australia, none of me or my friends ever got the urge to play golf as Mario. Mario Kart Double Dash. This is actually my favorite Mario Kart just because it mixes up the formula. Player one drives, player two shoots. It's brilliant. They should bring back this concept for future Mario Karts. I mean, make it as a playable play option. I totally dig it. It's a great Mario Kart game. Remember what I said about arcadey sports games? They don't make them like this anymore. Mario Smash Football is amazing. Check it out. Now, personally, I like Mario Strikers on the Nintendo Wii more, the sequel to this game, but there are people out there who prefer this game just because it utilizes normal controllers and none of this motion control garbage that you had on the Nintendo Wii. But yeah, check this one out. It's a great arcade sucking game. Mortal Kombat Deadly Alliance. I need at least one Mortal Kombat on every console and I love me a good fighter. NBA Street Volume 2. This is one of the greatest games of all time. This is one of my favorite games of all time. I spent hundreds of hours playing this game as a teenager. I absolutely loved it. I cannot praise this game enough. If you like arcadey basketball games, get this game. It is one of the greatest of all time. NBA Street Volume 3. I only got this because I loved 2 so much. 3 was not as good, but if you get this on the GameCube, you can play as Mario, Luigi, and Peach. And having them in a team with real basketball players is fucking ridiculous. It's awesome, check it out. But again, not as good as NBA Street Volume 2. Need for Speed Underground. This is one of my favorite racing games of all time. I don't like the open world racing games, so NFS Underground is 100% the way to go if you're anything like me. I had a lot of fun playing this game as a teenager. It's still good today, the graphics hold up. Check it out. NFL Street. Now, the only reason I got this game is because I loved NBA Street Volume 2 so much that everything with the EA Big Title I had to get. And American Football does look cool, so I thought an arcadey version of that would be amazing. I was wrong. I'm Australian. I had no idea what was going on. I mean, I'd play the game for a bit and every time I got a touchdown it was fun and all good and all that, but it's, I don't think it's for Australians. But if you are Australian and you did manage to get your head around it, mad props to you bro. NHL Hits 2002. Now I'm in love with you. I'm Australian. I'm not really into ice hockey, but because of the Mighty Ducks, I always get every ice hockey game I can get my hands on. This is an arcadey ice hockey game, and remember what I said about arcadey sports games in this generation. They just don't make them like this anymore. And this is one of the good ones. Pokemon Coliseum. This is the first true 3D Pokemon game. I got a lot of love for this game. I really enjoyed it as a teenager. And it got me all the second generation Pokemon that you couldn't get in generation three. I absolutely loved it. And I get the feeling this one might be worth something. Let's check it out. So I got this game for $41 and it's going for $150. So it's not worth as much as I thought of me, but $150 is a good amount of money. Pokemon XD, Gale of Darkness. This game is on my bucket list. I'm, I know it's good. I just never get around to finishing it. There's not much I can say about this game other than the fact that it is another 3D Pokemon game. You know what? Let's just see how much it's worth. Now I paid $170 for this, so I'm hoping it hasn't gone down in value. Okay, okay. I just found out how much this is worth. It is going for $450 on eBay. I don't care how much my collection's worth, I'm not selling it. This is one of the goats of gaming, Resident Evil 4. I played it for the first time on the Nintendo GameCube in 2018. It was awesome. I got into the Resident Evil franchise from that day forth. Soul Calibur 2. As a Nintendo man, you have to own this game. Or woman, 
or whatever you identify as. Because you see, Link's in this game. That's right, Link is in a fighting game that's not Super Smash Brothers. It's a really cool thing to see. You gotta have this game if you've got a Nintendo GameCube. Star Wars Rogue Leader, Rogue Squadron 2. This game, graphically speaking, totally holds up. Check it out. The thing I love most about this game is when you play it, there's no mention of a prequel trilogy. There's no mention of a sequel trilogy. It's just the original trilogy. A time where all was right with the world. Anyways, this game holds up graphically. Check it out if you got a Nintendo GameCube. SSX on tour. I love the design for the menus in this game. It's sick as. It's also got Mario, Peach and Luigi in the game. So you can snowboard or ski as one of those lovely Nintendo characters. Look, back in the day, snowboarding games were amazing. This is one of them. Check it out. Simpsons Hit and Run. This is a game that we may never get a remaster. I recommend checking it out on whatever platform you can check it out on. I've got a Nintendo GameCube. Look, Apu's on the cover. He's been cancelled. They will never bring this game back because there's a level in this game where you got to play through as Apu. And that section of the game, if we do get a remaster, will be completely missing. Anyways, I got this for $28. It is worth $100. SSX3, this is another amazing snowboarding game. Sonic Adventure 2, Battle. This was the first Sonic game I played on any Nintendo system. So I got this game specifically because Sega had started developing games for Nintendo. And this was the first game where I got to experience Sonic on a Nintendo system. It blew my mind, it was awesome, and Shadow is the coolest character in the Sonic universe. Fight me. Star Wars Jedi Outcast 2. I loved this game growing up. It was awesome. I loved playing the dual mode. It was awesome. I loved, I loved this game. It has an edge well, not the slightest. So um, maybe don't check it out. Um, it's widely available, so you can check it out if you want. And we have Super Smash Bros. Melee. This is a sick game. Hundreds of hours have been spent on this game. Yeah, I feel like this is one of those games that everyone who had a GameCube had. Tony Hawk Pro Skater 3. Darth Maul's in this game. The Ultimate Spider-Man. There were three Spider-Men on the GameCube. I've only got this one because I love its art style. You know, the cell shade graphics really sell the look of the comic book adventure. Beautiful Joe. This came out in a time where they weren't making side scrollers anymore, so I had to check it out. It is one of my bucket list games because I have not beaten it, but I did like what I did play through. It's very hilarious. X-Men Legends. If you like Marvel Ultimate Alliance, you need to check out this game. It's amazing. Check it out. I love it. It also brings our uh, original story to the X-Men franchise. 13, another Cell Shade game. I love this game. It looks like a comic book. It's got the Cell Shade look. It's amazing. Mulder, or David Duchovny, voices the main character. There's also a remake of this game, but apparently it's no good. So probably check it out on the GameCube. And that is my collection. Um, I actually evaluated all the games while you weren't watching. So I did the math and my collection is worth $4,150.79. And that actually really upsets me because I ain't selling my collection. It's actually really annoying sitting on that much value. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed that video. Let me know if there are any games that you think I need to add to my collection. Um, if you've got any questions about the games that I have and if I recommend them, just say so in the comment section below. That's it from me, see ya.